Howdy, welcome to the channel. And today we're gonna be unboxing this new purchase of mine. This is the Ryobi Soap Dispensing Scrubber. Now this is going to be using this hex triangular shape connector on it. And they have a lot of different tool heads that you can actually use for this. And you can see here that I've actually purchased three additional heads that we're going to be unboxing. And there is a significant difference in the feeling. This is very smooth, very soft, very gentle. So I could actually see this working very well, even on something like an automobile or the side of an RV. I think this would actually do a really good job. The medium head is definitely firmer. It's still relatively soft, but on delicate surfaces, I could actually see this being an issue. So the hard one is definitely hard. That's what she said. <laughs> compared to the other ones. Uh, it's very, very stiff. And uh, you definitely don't want to have this against something like a car's finish. It is a rather sick car, my brother. The side of an RV. This would be something that would go really good against some hardy plank siding, some brick surfaces, stuff like that, concrete. I could see this actually working really good. So let's go ahead and open this. We're gonna start with the blue one here, the soft one. Got a couple of pieces of tape at the top holding it. So we open it up and Minimal packaging with this. There's no instruction manual, which is good because you really don't need it. Good job, Ryobi, on making it minimal and recyclable. And we can see the logo on the back and we have the hard plastic shell. Definitely nice and soft with that. I also like the curve that's with this one. You can see there's definitely a shape difference here. This actually is gonna protect different finishes and stuff because the side of your plastic is not exposed. The side of this plastic is exposed. Let's go ahead and open the medium bristled one. Now, the, the tape on the side, if you're strong, you can just pull it off like I did. If you're not, you can just grab a knife and actually cut the connectors and then flip it open and simply pull it out. And again, nothing else in the box. Same design with the back and then same design on the sides. And then finally, we're going to have the hard. Once again, nothing else in the box. Thank you, Ryobi, for not wasting a whole lot of additional stuff in these boxes. So that's the three 11 inch heads that you can purchase. This one actually does come with a seven inch head, which has the same rollover style. So it's definitely a little bit different than this older one, but it will work just as good. Now let's go ahead and rip into this box. And per typical with the Ryobi box, the head is actually glued on and you can pry at this and work this out. You can actually flip to the other end of the box, which is what I'm going to do here. And you can actually just cut the tape and open up the box this way. Now, of course, they're expecting you to be pulling it from the other end, so things may not lay the exact way that Ryobi was expecting you to have it lay. That is everything out of there. Now, the one thing I did like about this one is it actually has an extension on it. With a twist and a pull, you can actually take this up to 51 inches in length, which if you have a tall RV, you have a truck or something, and you're trying to scrub the top of it with one of these softer bristle brushes, that actually makes it really nice having that extension. Now this is waterproof. It is IPX7, which means that it can actually be submerged to three foot for about 30 minutes. And you're not supposed to have any water ingress into the battery compartment. To get into the battery compartment, we just simply flip it. This is pretty typical of their waterproof stuff. I have several of their tools like this. And you can see the battery would just simply go in here and then we close it up and lock it down and that would be it. All right, and here's our accessory pack. Let's see, it looks like we have soap solution. We also get a seven inch vortex cleaning head. So you can see that this carries the same design as this one. It's just that you're gonna have a lot more surface area between the two. Now you can definitely tell that in the shipping and storage of this unit at my local Home Depot, there was a part, probably the handle, sitting on this. Yep, that's what it looks like. And so it's actually bent the bristles down. Get bent. So your mileage may vary. Yours may look a little bit different, but it did actually cause a little bit of bending of the head. Now, hopefully that'll come back through usage we shall see. So we have the bottle here where we're gonna pour our soap solution in that it has this little 
bottle. Personally, I would rather see the concentrate go into a reservoir that's built into the system because now you're gonna have this bottle stuck out to the side. And eh, for the most part, it's probably gonna be okay, but every now and then I could see me bumping this and I'm just concerned, is this going to end up breaking? If it was actually integrated within the body, then I wouldn't have to worry about that. It would also be a lot easier to fill like the oil reservoir on our chainsaws. You just undo something up top, you fill the reservoir, put the cap on and you're good to go. Now, the nice thing about having it as a bottle is you can actually pull it off and clean it. So that is a benefit. If you need to empty this out, it does make that easy. So there's that feature with it. In our instruction manual, we have the assembly instructions, which is what I was wanting to actually look at, is how do I put the handle onto the shaft correctly? It says push the handle onto the shaft until the handle is securely seated onto the pole between the coupler and the soap and water controls. So if we look at it, we have the coupler and then we have the soap and water control. So that means this is going to push on right in this area. So we take it and push it down and on. So now we're going to take our bolt and we're going to push it through. Now you can actually see that there is a hex side of the connector. Now on the other side, it's simply flat. And what we have is we have a hex bolt with a wing nut and the hex head is what's going to push through here and it's going to rest inside the hex portion. And so that's actually gonna hold the head of the bolt so that it doesn't spin around. Then we take our wing nut and spin it on. For the veterans out there, this part's kind of boring for you, but for the folks who've never assembled something like this, this is really helpful. Because if you've never been shown this stuff, those of us who do it forever take it for granted. And those who've never touched stuff like this before, they're appreciative of this level of understanding of what's going on. So that gets the handle on. And then up here at the top, we have a spritzer head, but it's not attached to anything. And you will see that we have two holes, one here and one here. And on the side of this, we have tiny little pins that are on here. We have one there and we have one there. So what I'm gonna do is tilt it sideways and push one spring in and then rotate it down. And that now has it locked down in there. Real simple to do. Now the cool thing is because of the way it's designed, if you bump it, let's say against your RV, it's gonna come out. I would actually rather have that then it be rigid and solid because if it's rigid and solid and you bump it against something, then it's going to probably cause damage to whatever you hit it against. So this actually is really cool. I like that. Now to adjust the head, we have a push button on the side. So we push that and that allows us to tilt the head and it has locking positions in it. Let's see, we can go straight. I'm gonna lock it in all the different positions. Oh, that's it, okay. So multiple different positions and you can see it has the notches for it. Now on the spray nozzle, one of the things I didn't show is it's actually adjustable. So even though it's on here, you can point it up, you can point it down. I was trying to open it to see if you could actually pull off the outer plastic shell so that you could pull off the spray tip and clean the tip. Because usually in this area of Texas, especially we have a lot of hard water. We've got a lot of uh, limestone and tips like this will get clogged literally within the first day you use this thing. If you're out there cleaning your truck or your RV, it will become clogged. So having the ability to unscrew this and put it into something like CLR would actually make a huge difference, but it's not removable. But this whole thing is removable. So technically you could undo the whole thing and then dip this whole thing down into CLR. All right, so to put on the head, we have this nifty little hex triangular system. You can see that it has the lock unlock on here and you can see the triangular system there. And then all we do is we take it and we slide it in and then we rotate the head and it locks in. And there's actually a positive bump that happens and that fully locks the head on. That was easy. And now we're just gonna grab one of our batteries. Now this is not an HP battery, so you do not have to have one of those to get the optimal. You can use just one of the regular batteries with it and off it goes. All right, so now we have our push button down here and that turns it on and off. We also have our connector here for the water hose. So we simply take our water hose and screw this on, fill it up, and then we get to select. What do we want to use? Do we want to use nothing at all, which means that it's not going to squirt out anything. 
Do we want to turn it one's position and have it squirt water through the head? Or do we want to turn it one more position and have it squirt water and the cleaning solution that is inside your bottle? And then with the push button, let's see what modes it has. We have on and we have off. That is pretty typical of these cleaners that Ryobi puts out. There's usually not a high and a low. Now, the handheld scrubber, the four volt, that's a little bit different. Link in description below for the review of that particular tool. That one actually does have a high and low, but this one doesn't. This one simply has an on off. And you can see we can use it with no water whatsoever. And You can push pretty stinking hard on that. And it's not stopping it. So they've done a really good job. Nice. And hopefully it stays that way. That's actually one of my complaints with the older version of this tool is uh, it doesn't like being pressed on. It is not happy. So we're gonna swap this out. Wow. So once again, pushing down really hard here. Flinging stuff all over the place. Look at that. Woo! Woo! <laughs> We're pushing down really hard and it's not stopping. That's pretty impressive. Now, most cases, you're not going to want to push down that hard because you're probably going to be messing up whatever you're actually trying to clean. But in this instance, I'm not worried about my old table here. So I'm going to be taking this tool and I am going to be using it around my house. I actually have a couple of really good cleaning projects. I specifically left my shower, which is a tile and stone shower, uncleaned for quite a while now on purpose because I wanted to show something like this cleaning it. Additionally, I'm going to use it on the side of the RV so that we can see if it works well on the RV. So be looking for that video coming up sometime soon. So if you have any questions or comments about any of the tools that are behind me, or this tool in particular, be sure to leave it in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys and I love engaging with you guys. Please remember this channel is here to try and help everybody make tool decisions and if you should buy this particular tool or not. And I definitely appreciate all the comments and suggestions y'all have like this one here. Thank you very much for leaving your thoughts and ideas below. Thanks for watching.